Hey, Mindful Tribe, we have talked about attachment theory quite a bit here on the show. And today is another day that we're going to talk about attachment theory. And it's such an important topic. That's at least one of the topics that we'll be touching on. And I'm just so thrilled today because I have the guest to talk about this. She is so knowledgeable and so willing to share everything she does know. I have with us here today, Thais Gibson. Thais, are you in mindfulness mode today? (laughs) Yes, I am. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. And I'm so excited to have you here and to have you here because I know that you're so willing to share your knowledge because I've learned a lot about attachment theory from your videos. She's determined to educate exactly how the mind can be reprogrammed. So it's not an easy task to reprogram the mind, is it? Where do we start, Thais? What I realized that was so powerful is that anything you fight, you feed. And this is truly the case because our subconscious mind can't really tell the difference between like the word no or not. It doesn't really speak through language. It speaks more through emotions and through symbols. So when you sit there and you're like, I'm not going to drink the wine, I'm not going to finish the wine. Your subconscious is like wine, wine. And, And sometimes you'll hear, you know, a good example of this is if I say to you, don't think of the pink elephant, like pink elephant is in your mind. Right. And so anything we we say, don't eat that bad food, don't eat those cookies, don't eat, you know, whatever it is, we're actually feeding. And so when I learned to, to do two things, this really was the last straw that like changed addiction for me altogether, was I learned to say, I'm going to be healthy. You know, I'm going to release my relationship to this addiction. I'm going to, and I started framing things in the positive in my internal dialogue to self. And the other really profound thing, which I think is an important counterpart of healing for every single person, irrespective of what you're trying to heal or transform in your life, is you cannot beat yourself up. Right. When we beat ourselves up and we go, what's wrong with you that you drank all that wine? What? Why did you have to have that second glass? You're doing it again. As soon as we do that, we elicit emotional patterns that are negative. And then we need a behavioral coping mechanism to deal with the way that we feel. I was just going to ask that about how you felt, because it's so easy to feel like a victim and to face the fact that, hey, you're having this problem. You have to face that fact. But how do you how do you, you know, realize that you're a victim without falling into that victim trap? Yes. And one of the other really important things is that the issue isn't the issue. So the wine is not the issue. The substances are not the issue. What the real issue is, is because we see people who go into surgeries and are on morphine drips or whatever, and they come out, they're not addicted to painkillers right after. What's actually happening is that our sub, our subconscious mind stores everything and it stores all of our memories with all of the emotions attached to them. And it consolidates these memories over time and things like that. But if we have a lot of stored emotional pain, then our subconscious is living in that. And then we start pleasure seeking to equilibrate for the pain because our brain has a homeostatic impulse. It wants balance, it wants equilibrium. So the more stored subconscious pain we have, the more we will start pleasure seeking or escaping or doing counterproductive things for ourselves. And so to not feel like the victim, what we actually have to do is realize if we are in pain and if we're telling a victim story, or if we are feeding into that, number one, we have to start transforming that and being gentle in the relationship to ourselves so we're not refeeding the cycle and speak to ourselves and change our internal dialogue to exercise compassion and gentleness and understanding and inquiry instead of judgment and shaming. And we also have to be able to recognize, okay, what are these underlying painful experiences that I'm carrying and how can I start isolating them and going in and reprogramming or cleaning them up so that I'm relieving this stuff from my own subconscious. And now I don't have to equilibrate or compensate for what's going on on a daily, you know, basis because our subconscious mind is like the filter we experience reality through. 